Dear Stephen Hawking, I think I might be in love with you. So, um, a few months ago, a long time ago, when I finished reading Paper Towns by John Green, I started doing this thing where I would do an open letter to the author when I finished a book. And <laughs> I finished a few books since then, but I haven't really done one yet, so I might catch up on some of my old ones. Whatever, I'm almost done with Catching the Rye. So excited. I will definitely be writing to uh, Mr. J.D. Salinger. Okay, so for this one, I read Stephen Hawking's My Brief History. I, right? Yes. I highly recommend you read it. He's great. Um, so now I'm going to start doing the open letter to him. Dear Stephen, I think I might be in love with you. It's kind of a problem for me because you're like, you know, 50 years older than me. But hey, if I was 50 years older or you were 50 years younger, I think that you are hilarious and brilliant. Of course you're brilliant. Everybody knows that you're brilliant. But I had no idea how funny you were until I read this book. It was, honestly, it was one of the best books I've ever read. Normally I don't like biographies and I really don't like autobiographies because most of the time they come up it was really pretentious because if you were writing an autobiography of course you think that you did something worthwhile otherwise why would you be writing it but this one it just came across as funny and it was more like it it sort of came across like yeah people want to hear about my life but it was more like I guess you want to know these things and told in a really just great way and I swear if I'd known you when I was you know when you were doing your undergrad or starting your PhD, uh, I would have. And I'm not just saying that because Benedict Cumberbatch played you in a movie. Okay, so for the question, how are you? How are you feeling? In one of the last couple of chapters, you talk about time travel and a lot of the different theories and why you think that it's very improbable. And most of them make a lot of sense. They're all about traveling backwards in time. But I was just wondering what your thoughts were on traveling forward in time faster than one second per second. Like, a year per second or something. Of course, that would present its own problems, because then the future would be way overpopulated, because all the people from the past would be in the future, and then they would have no way to go back to the past. And, like, there would kind of be the whole grandfather paradox, because now the person from the past is in the future, so the genetic line wouldn't be the same, because now it's, you know hundred years in the future, or however far they're able to go. <laughs> Less technical question. Who's your favorite doctor? In the, in the book, you mention um, you didn't want to sound like a Dalek from Doctor Who, so obviously you at least know about it. But, so who's your favorite? Did you watch it uh, when it first started coming out? Uh, discuss. Why haven't you visited Australia? I mean, we visited Antarctica and all of the other continents, but not Australia? It, you're going up in space, but Australia is too far? Um, I don't know, I just thought it was odd. <laughs> Cause I mean, I mean you, do, you do you, whatever you want. I was just wondering if there's an actual reason or if it was just coincidence. Uh, if you were beginning your PhD now, and science knew everything that it knows now, like, including the stuff that you discovered... This is weird. Right? But if you were starting your PhD now, what topic would you choose? Do you think that you'd stick with cosmology and space and everything? And physics? Or would you be like, F that? Um... Knowing everything that you know now, like, I'm gonna go back to math. I mean, in the book he said that you wouldn't go back to math, which I use it as an example. Because uh, obviously it's not one that you would pick, and I don't want you to be like, oh yes, so, uh, well, whatever you said, sure. Because uh, I'm not gonna think about it, because you already thought about it. What if there are no time travelers now because of the grandfather paradox? Like, what if, um, you can't travel back in time further than when time travel was discovered because then we would have evidence of it and it would change when we discovered it. 
knowing for sure that it can be done. I don't know, that's what I was thinking about when I was reading your stuff. Um, but I mean, the rest of the stuff that you're talking about were valid points, but maybe there's a theory that we haven't discovered yet that would be an explanation for the universe where time travel existed. And until that theory is discovered, time travelers can't go back that far. I don't know, but my roommates are here and they think that I'm crazy talking to myself. So, Steven, I hope that you're doing well and that you continue on, on your path of discovery and science and the world will never forget you. I will never forget you. Um, warm wishes and best regards, Christiana. Thanks you guys for watching. Um, like it if you liked it. If you like me doing these open letters, book review type things, um, let me know in the comments. And if you think that I'm insane, you can leave that in the comments too, but I will hate you forever. Good night, sweet dreams, love you. But hey, if I was 50 years younger, or wait.